Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to July 2018, the start of the new academic year, and the seventh quiz of the year, or the first of the new academic year. I have 10 terrific cases, and let's see uh, how well you do. So in this case, I asked the question, what's the least likely diagnosis? And what you see in this case is a very large mass in the region of the head of the pancreas, but you notice that there's no evidence of dilated pancreatic duct, there's no evidence of dilated common duct. So, you know, you begin to wonder, at first glance you would say, okay, giant adenocarcinoma, but it's even big for an adenocarcinoma, and surely it's not going to have that uh, appearance. If it was a big adenocarcinoma, you would expect to see the duct dilatation. So things we think about, and I've shown cases of a GIST tumor, of a duodenum, and this could be a GIST tumor, it wasn't. This was metastatic melanoma, in fact. So we've seen metastasis to the duodenum, a peripancreatic region. We've also seen large adenocarcinomas, uh, particularly osteoclastic, some of the unusual tumors. But it would be unlikely for this to be a neuroendocrine tumor. The lesion is not vascular. Um, that's probably the least likely diagnosis. This, in fact, as I mentioned, was melanoma. Now, it is true one could argue and say, well, maybe it's a neuroendocrine tumor, but it's not very vascular. It is a possibility, so I'll give you half credit. This is a great case, and i show you just a couple images. So what you see is a large cystic lesion, which at first glance looks like the stomach, but the stomach is forward. This is not the stomach. It extends near the spleen, so what could it be? Well, it could be an adrenal cyst. It could be a, um, think about it, it could be a duplication cyst off the stomach. In fact, by the way, this was a duplication cyst. It could be a pancreatic cyst, lymphopathelial cyst, serous cyst adenoma are all possibilities. It could be a cystic neuroendocrine tumor. Well, they're cystic, but usually those lesions have rim enhancement. There's no evidence of wall thickening. There's no evidence of enhancement. This was a gastric duplication cyst, but the least likely diagnosis would have been a cystic neuroendocrine tumor. Now, in this case, I ask you what the most likely diagnosis is. It's a beautiful example. You could see evidence of a wedge-shaped defect in the left kidney, beautifully shown with cinematic. Wedge shape, big defect, you know that's going to be a renal infarct. Abscesses aren't so well-defined. Carcinomas are in wedge shape, and TCCs are not well-shaped. They're infiltrating. This was a beautiful example of a renal infarct, particularly on the cinematic. And you can see on the cinematic, and if I showed you more of the other MIP images, there's occlusion of branches of the patient's renal artery, which explains what exactly happened. This patient had right lower quadrant pain, and what's the best diagnosis? Well, I'll tell you that the first three diagnoses were what was on the requisition. This was a large renal abscess, and it does make the point, one of the advantages of CT is that even when you have the best clinical judgment, you're not always right. And so this seemed to be right lower quadrant pain, GI in origin, appendicitis, right-sided diverticulitis, Crohn's disease. Maybe you're throwing cancer there. Maybe you're throwing perforation, ischemia. But you were totally in the wrong organ system. This was a renal abscess. Just to make the point that sometimes renal abscesses can look exactly like cystic renal tumors, clinical history, the fever, all become very helpful. But at times, there can be overlap between renal abscess and a cystic renal tumor. Now, in this case, I asked you, what's the lesion in the spleen? I'm giving you a, a coronal view with a very vascular, well-defined lesion and showing you that lesion was cinematic. It's well-defined and it's vascular. Lymphoma is not vascular. Melanoma is not going to be vascular. And both lymphoma and melanoma, the spleen would be large or there'd be multiple lesions. Hamartomas are usually exophytic. Though you can consider it, but they're usually not so homogeneous, but they are somewhat vascular. Hemangioma is the best diagnosis. Hemangiomas can be small or larger. They can be solitary or multiple. Beautiful example of hemangioma of the spleen, and I love that cinematic rendering. What about this case? Interesting mass AP window. The key finding besides the AP window is the vascularity. Now, you could say if it wasn't vascular, then you would say metastatic lung cancer or metastasis from a primary tumor, or small cell, things like that. But when you look at the answer, lymphoma is typically not vascular. Small cell nodes occur in the AP window, they're not vascular. Thymoma can have some vascularity, but you're not going to see it in the AP window. 
you could have, if I put a renal cell carcinoma metastatic, you might have thought of that, but this was a paraganglioma. And we see them in the abdomen, we see them in the chest, see them in the mediastinum, and they're typically hypervascular, just a beautiful example of a paraganglioma, something indeed to think about. This patient was short of breath and we were doing a PE study. If you look at the lung windows, you see multiple lesions in the lung that are cavitated, mainly peripheral, wedge shape, a beautiful set of images, septic emboli. Now it's true you can have cavitary metastasis from head and neck tumor, but the wedge-shaped nature of many of these lesions takes it away from metastasis and puts it in the infectious inflammatory category, and this was a wonderful example of septic emboli. Now this case is interesting. I'm showing you both a uh, axial view, which shows an enhancing lesion in the patient's uh, jejunum. So what could I say? I'd say carcinoid or gist. If you look at the lesion, it seems to be growing beyond the wall of the bowel. When I see it grow beyond the wall, and I don't see a desmoplastic reaction or mass in the mesentery, I'm thinking of gist. Look how beautiful you see it in the coronal volume rendered view. And this indeed was a gist tumor. Lymphoma is not so well defined typically, or it's multiple. Adenocea is infiltrative. And carcinoid is something I would have considered. And if you said carcinoid, I'll give you half a point. Maybe I'll give you three quarters of a point. But this was a beautiful gist tumor, very nicely done. In this case, I asked for the least likely diagnosis. And what you see is a large infiltrating anterior mediastinal mass that's very hot on PET scan. Invariably, this is going to be lymphoma. And in fact, it was lymphoma. The patient also had small bowel involvement. It could be thymoma. It could be teratoma, though teratoma is usually a more cystic. Sarcoidosis gives you nodes in the anterior mediastinum, though typically in the hyalur regions. Sarcoid can be positive on PET, but this infiltrating nature and the very, very hot PET scan puts you more toward lymphoma, which indeed was the correct diagnosis. On this case, I asked, what's the best diagnosis? Well, this was originally for a pancreatic mass, but you can see there's a mass, but it's not in the pancreas. It's in the proximal duodenum shown on the axial and the coronal view. The mass has increased vascularity, and I'm showing you the venous phase. I'll tell you it was brighter even on the arterial phase. It could be a pancreatic rest, an ectopic pancreatic rest can occur, but it can occur. Gist tumor can occur in their region as well, and I showed you earlier in this quiz a gist tumor and again, I made the point that just tend to go exophytic. Adenocarcinomas usually aren't so well defined in the duodenum, and they're also infiltrating. If you told me metastatic renal cell, okay, I could buy that. This ended up being a carcinoid tumor. We talk about carcinoids, typically distal ileum, mass in the mesentery, but there's another whole group of carcinoids that occur in the proximal duodenum, and they're vascular, they're not very aggressive, and they don't give the uh, carcinoid syndrome. So this was a carcinoid tumor, beautiful example. So I showed you 10 terrific cases. Uh, hopefully you got them right, and if not, hopefully you learned something, showed you some cinematic, showed you some other 3Ds, showed you a whole bunch of cases ranging from small bowel to kidney to chest to everything in between. And with that, I hope you enjoy the quiz and hope you have a great month. Catch you later.